patients have read it. What happened when a doctor or nurse accused you of faking it, when you were actually in need of urgent medical care? My friend's dad went to the ER and the doctor said, he was fine after minimal examination. Her dad insisted something was wrong, and said he wouldn't leave, until they ran some tests. As he was being escorted out by security, he had a brain aneurysm and died. Her family was awarded a pretty massive malpractice settlement, but they were absolutely devastated. I fell down a flight of stairs one time while working, hit a nail on the way down, and ripped my forearm open, and was bleeding a good bit. Adrenaline had me going long enough for my girlfriend, a nurse at another hospital, to drive me there. I had a bloody paper towel on my arm, and all the security guards and nurses assumed I was a junkie that blew a vein. Finally all the hype wore off, and I kinda passed out, and woke up in a wheelchair in the exam room. I don't know exactly what happened, but my girlfriend was flipping on the workers. She said half of them assumed I was on drugs, and the other half thought I was faking it to skip the line. I wasn't dying of blood loss or anything, I just got oozy, when I actually was able to see the meat in my arm for the first time. They all just watched me as I fell to the floor, and busted my head on the floor. Even then they didn't do anything. My girlfriend who's not even half my size as, I'm not a small guy all had to pick me up, and drag me into the wheelchair. That hospital. Not as a patient, but as a parent of a patient. My wife and I started to suspect, that something was wrong with our son, starting at age 2. He would run around all day, and was an active little guy but never sweat. He also never appeared to get cold. We live in New England, and he would often take his shirt off, before going to sleep, even in the winter months. These concerns were dismissed as a, toddlers are weird sort of thing by his doctor. We later noticed that, he would stop and complain about his hands or feet hurting, while playing or laying in bed. These were also dismissed. We were told that, the pain in his feet could be, because his feet are flat, or because of growing pains. We were told, that it could also be attention related. The doctor said, that it's not uncommon for middle children to act out. This continued for 4 years. My sister is a biologist and asked us, if we ever got him checked for Fabry disease. I flat out asked the doctor, if he could be tested, and the doctor told us, that there was no way this was Fabry, and they weren't going to test a kid without any genetic history of the disorder, the disorder is genetic, and without a classic sign, one that often doesn't show up until adulthood, if it shows up at all. We waited until our son was literally screaming in bed about his hands, and feet feeling, like they were on fire. We demanded to get him tested, and he was diagnosed with Fabry. It's essentially a metabolic disorder caused by a missing enzyme. There are many issues associated with it, but the main one is extreme neuropathic pain in the hands and feet. The pain can be be random, but with my son it is normally because he overheated, since he lacks the ability to sweat. He plays sports, so we have to be careful. Overactivity and fevers have to be watched out for, since his body can't cool itself down. Pain can last anywhere from a couple of minutes to a couple of days. The average age of diagnosis for this disorder is around 16, so it's not surprising that his doctor missed it. Most doctors do, since it's a rare disorder. That was a little over a year ago, and my son is doing well now. There is no cure, but treatment allows him to live a relatively normal life just with some added pain. I couldn't imagine making him wait until his teens to get any relief. I was in labor, and because it was my first, they acted like I had no idea what was happening, and kept denying what I was insisting. I was over 2 months early and handled pain so well, they acted like it was just in my head. Made me stand at the counter filling out paperwork, while I insisted I needed to push. They decided to lay me down to check, if I had even started dilating, and I promptly pushed him out. I was furious with how I was treated. I still am. My mother had a stroke at age 32. The doctors didn't diagnose it properly for over 24 hours, because they were convinced her symptoms must have been related to drugs, since she was in good health and so young. My dad apparently tried to tell them that she has no history of drug use, but they didn't believe him. Now she's permanently disabled, because of how long it took for her to receive proper treatment. Not me but my best friend nearly died of a kidney infection that her doctor brushed off as period cramps. Not me, but my mother. 
she had called an ambulance because she had been experiencing chest pains, to which they basically told her she was crazy. About a month later, she passed away from a heart attack. When I was in labor, the hospital had my records wrong and showed I was due a month later. I was, especially since I was in labor and in a lot of pain. The lady kept arguing until she realized I was in labor. She must have heard all the my boyfriend, now husband, we are talking about her. <laughs> Happened to my mom. They told her she was having an anxiety attack. She was having a heart attack. <laughs> to my doctor's credit, we both kind of had a laugh at this one before the test results came back. I went to my primary because I'd been experiencing hot flashes. Dr. Google couldn't tell me what was wrong, and I knew it didn't feel right. Well at least we know it isn't menopause, my doctor joked. I laughed. What 23 year old woman spontaneously goes through menopause? This one. My doctor was very apologetic. ETA, I'm on hormone therapy now and doing fine. Luckily didn't end up with any crazy negative side effects, but could have, if my doctor didn't run a full workup just to be safe. Changing it up just a little, my colleagues were convinced a girl was just faking a stomach ache. She was about 16 years old, and it was exam season, a time when we would get many sudden tummy aches fits, etc. So I understood their skepticism but something didn't sit right with me. I took her history myself, and sent her for an emergency ultrasound of her abdomen. Ectopic pregnancy. It was ready to rupture at any moment, so I shipped her over to ob slash gin to get surgery asap. She came out just fine, but man oh man did I give my co-workers a hard time after that. Exam season or not, we need to be thorough. Had another time, when it was just me, and one other doctor working admission. She dismissed a case of a little girl faking fatigue for retention. Thankfully I overheard her telling someone, so I went to double check. The poor girl was having a carpopital spasm, and was most definitely not faking her condition. Hooked her up to some calcium, and sent her home with meds the next day. I'm not trying to make it sound like I'm perfect, but in a line of work we must always be a little paranoid. I wouldn't really say they didn't believe that I was in pain, but didn't believe how much pain I was in. In February 2016, I started getting side cramps. I went to the ER, they said I had a tiny ovarian cyst. Okay cool I've had those before. In March 2016, I started my period, and it continued until June. Between March and May I went to, at least, 7 doctor's offices and ers. I've had several ultrasounds and always had about 5 to 6 cysts spread between both of my ovaries. I was told I was too young, you're only 23, we don't want to take the cysts out, cause it could damage your ovaries, or you could lose one or both, if something goes wrong, and what if you want to have kids one day. And on one instance, it's a Saturday and we don't feel like calling a surgeon in. I was calling off work, or leaving early at least once a week. I always had a portable heating pad on, and taking pretty heavy pain pills. In May 2016, I finally found a doctor who would do exploratory surgery on me. He pretty much opened me up, went holy, and closed me back up. I then had to have a major surgery a couple weeks later, because my left ovary had eaten the cysts, and was attaching itself to my colon and an artery in my leg. So I ended up losing my ovary anyway. I did throw a see you later of you later party, before my big surgery which was a big hit. Not my child, my brother. He was 11 and suddenly tired, and lethargic. He missed a lot of school, he hated missing school. My mom kept taking him in, and they'd say it's the flu, or puberty, or mono, and it wouldn't ever get better. After a few weeks of this, my mom brought him to the hospital again, and yelled at his doctors that something was seriously wrong with her son, and they needed to do their jobs and figure out what it was. It was leukemia. They called the next morning just before 2am, and said the tests came back, your son needs to come in now, not in the morning, right now. I can't imagine what happens to a parent in that moment, when you know it's bad, because they call you in at 2am, but you don't know why. He was in treatment for just over a year, and was re-diagnosed on his birthday. A few months later, he had a bone marrow transplant, and was able to come home pretty quickly. There were complications from the transplant, 
called graft versus host disease, like organ rejection, but the new cells try to reject you. It attacked his musculoskeletal system, causing stiffness and some dangerous situations. This October will be 8 years since the transplant, and he's cancer free. That boy loves to use the cancer card now, but he definitely earned the right. A doctor didn't believe me when I had a kidney stone that was too big to pass. He only changed his mind when another doctor checked me and started freaking out. Since I was getting super sick from the stuck stone, the doctor ended up getting fired from the hospital and my parents sued him. I wouldn't call it urgent medical care, but I was stuck in my room for about 5 hours on my bed with my head pressed into my shoulder because I had a pinched nerve. I had never had one before. I wasn't able to move my head at all, and when my mom got home from work she called an ambulance for me. They carried me out in a sitting position, and off to the hospital we went. When we got there, it took about a half hour for me to get into the hospital bed, and ended up just giving up, and leaving me sitting upright. The doctor pulled my mom out of the room, and asked if I had a history of faking injuries, in order to get painkillers because I was pressing against the pain, instead of leaning my head away from it. I had bronchitis which turned into pneumonia, and when I went to the nurse she sent me back to class, because my fever was only 99. By the end of school I made it home on the bus, but I had to go to the emergency room, because I couldn't breathe. My lungs were filled with fluid. I was in 4th grade. I was out of school for 2 weeks I think. This was a school nurse not an actual nurse, but I still felt it was relevant. When I was 16, I was in a really dark place, and one day I decided to confide to my doctor that I thought I might be depressed and see what he would recommend it. Dude straight up laughed in my face and said, you're not depressed, you're just a teenager. I told my mom I wanted to change doctors after that, and it took another year and tons of self-destructive behavior before I sought help again. This is not as serious or urgent a condition as the others, but it still manages to raise my blood pressure years later. Starting from when I was about 7 I would have terrible stomach pains, which my pediatrician claimed was attention-seeking behavior. He told my parents that they should punish me anytime I complained of stomach problems. My parents, who love yelling, jumped at a new reason to scream at me on a nearly daily basis. When I went to college I was finally diagnosed as having a hiatal hernia, just like my grandparents, father, and aunt. When I was a kid they even commented that I had the same symptoms they did, which for my pediatrician meant that I was just mimicking their complaints and didn't have the same condition. Because it had been untreated for so long, I now have to worry about Barrett's and esophageal cancer, lucky me. New hearing doctor didn't believe that I needed hypoallergenic molds made and ended up making regular ones to try them out. Within a few days, my left ear was sore. It hurt a lot more than usual. Doctor and ear specialist thought it was just a little bit of irritation and that it would clear up quickly. It ended up being a major middle slash inner ear infection. Ruptured the eardrum, pus and blood everywhere on my pillow. About a month of agony, a lot of drugs, and a lot of specialists in the hospital. I was already very hard of hearing. That made me lose another 10 dB permanently. In army training going to sick call, made you a bag, and trying to get out of training. Even doctors kinda brush off people cause they see so many, some who are actually faking it. So when I went in with bad back pain, the medic clearing me brushed me off, and told me to go back to my company. Turned out my kidney was severely infected, 